Some of them very good. Thank you very much. It's excellent. Uh, I would say orchestration, the different steps of ordinary is being presented very nicely. All the presenter, particularly uh, how to harvest the lima, it's, a, it's the basis of the coronary. And the Jahangir sir demonstrated so nicely uh, in every steps of uh, grafting the vessels. So it's, a, it's a, I would say it's an excellent arrangement. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Attract to you, which is really uh, needed nowadays as we are getting more and more diffuse and post PCI cases. Yes. So it is very relevant. So go on, Dr. Imran. Thank you, sir. Good morning, esteemed discussant, facilitator, and learning audience. My name is Mohammad Imran, and I am a specialist cardiac surgeon at Ginleff Medical College Hospital, Gin Road, Dhaka. I extend a warm welcome to all of you. Today, I will talking about enhancing patient outcomes, analysis of 121 coronary endotectomy cases with coronary artery bypass graft, insight from oh. our practice journey and findings. I authored a journal article on this topic with my team, which was published last year. Coronary endotectomy was first described by Bailey et al. in 1957 as a treatment strategy for coronary artery disease without doing coronary artery bypass graft. Essential indications for this procedure are diffusely diseased coronary artery, diffuse disease with calcified plaque, disruption of the plaque during coronary anastomosis. Coronary endotectomy, new flavors from old recipe. Despite early adverse outcome, recent publication demonstrated that Coronary endotectomy, whether performed with on-pump or off-pump coronary artery bypass graft, can be safely undertaken with acceptable mortality, morbidity, and angiographic patency rate. This procedure ensures complete revascularization, providing satisfactory blood flow to the myocardium, particularly in cases of diffuse coronary artery disease or diffuse calcification, thereby preventing residual ischemia. Therefore, it is crucial to assess contemporary outcome reconsider this traditional approach and redefine its indication. A total of 1,412 coronary bypass gap procedures were performed from 11th June 2017 to 9 March 2024. Among them, 121 patients required coronary endotectomy, which is around 8.57%. All of these patients had triple vessel coronary artery disease, and all of this procedure performed by a single surgeon, Dr. Nuruddin Mahmud Jahangir sir. Here, pie chart displays percentage of patient gone through coronary endotectomy with coronary artery bypass graft procedure among total number of coronary artery bypass graft procedure. Age range was between 38 to 79 years. Among the 121 patient, 76 were men and 45 were women. Here, pie chart displays percentage of men and women who gone through coronary endotectomy mm -hmm. procedure. Now I am going to show a slide of surgical procedure. We perform coronary endotectomy by closed traction technique. Atrotomy site was established by octopus suction stabilizer. Atrotomy was 8 to 12 mm in length. Atheromatous plaque removed by using ring forceps with gentle traction technique with gentle message to the vessel wall. Sometimes we use nerve hook. This picture showing endotectomy performed in optics marginal artery, a smooth distal tapering end of an atheromatous plaque, and retrograde flow of blood from the endotectomy site indicate proper removal of the plaque. Sometimes we increase length of shunt by using two shunt together to cover the length of arteriotomy. Thank you. 
This figure showing atheroma from left anterior descending coronary artery. Here, figure is showing bifurcating atheroma from distal right coronary artery. Figure B showing atheroma from left anterior descending coronary artery. This both atheroma removed from a single patient. Postoperatively, all patients got heparin within 4 hours after surgery and clopidogrel and aspirin within 8 hours after surgery. Combination of warfarin, parasucral and aspirin started after chest drain removed. After discharge from the hospital, patient underwent a checkup at regular intervals. Among 121 cases, 116 cases performed without cardiopulmonary bypass and 5 cases required cardiopulmonary bypass for this procedure. Double endarectomy was performed in 7 patients. This table showing number of endarectomy performed in different coronary artery branches. 49.21% endarectomy performed in left anterior descending artery, choice of conduit was left internal memory artery. 10.93% procedure performed in diagonal artery, 0.78% procedure performed in ramus intermedius, and 9.37% endarectomy performed in obtuse marginal artery. Choice of conduit for this vessel was great saphenous vein. 29.69% endarectomy performed in right coronary artery, choice of conduit for 16% cases radial artery and for 30% cases get saphenous vein. There was no interpretive mortality, 3 patients died within 30 days which is around 2.47%, 5 year survival rate 9.40%. This study was done in Fuwei hospital where 208 patients underwent coronary endarectomy with coronary artery bypass graft procedure, published in 2020. Five-year survival rate for this group of patients was 89%. And this study, titled Long-Term Outcome After Coronary Endarectomy Adjunct to Coronary Artery Bypass Grafting, was conducted in Uppsala Hospital, Sweden, where 553 patients underwent coronary endarectomy procedure with coronary artery bypass graft. 10-year survival rate for this patient was 66%. Improved surgical technique and better postoperative care can greatly improve overall result of coronary artery bypass graft with endarectomy. With the increasing incidence of diffuse coronary artery disease and improving result of endarectomy, it is very important for cardiac surgeon to have coronary endarectomy in their armamentarium to achieve complete myocardial revascularization. These are the references. This is our surgical team. Thank you all.